Hunting the Bismarck, the Pride of Germany, part one. Let's go. If you want to go see extended content, bonus content, or just extra clips, go over to our Patreon. Link's in the description box down below. It's £3 a month. Cheaper Free than a mill deal. Cheaper British than a pounds. TV license. It's crazy. It's getting cheap. Mate, you need to do it. And that's a monthly basis, not weekly. Monthly. £3 a month. Let's jump straight into this one, guys. May 20th, 1941. A restaurant in Stockholm. A British officer, the naval attaché to neutral Sweden, is having dinner alone when the waiter interrupts him with a telephone <laughs> call from the embassy. His eyes widen. He slams down the receiver and rushes out. Waiting for him at the embassy is a Norwegian colonel, the man Swedish intelligence leaks to when they want information to land in British hands. He has a sighting report from a Swedish cruiser. They relay it to London via encrypted telegram, and it says, at 1500 hours, two large warships, escorted by three destroyers, five ships, and 10 or 12 planes, passed to the northeast. Okay. The ships are German, and the hunt is on. Mm. Here we go. This episode is sponsored by Wargaming. Download World of Warships and use the code EXTRA1 for free goodies. Link in the description. Use that code. The hunt for the Bismarck is one of the most dramatic events of World War II. It's a story of great ships clashing in frozen waters, a tale of risk-taking, heroism, and shocking loss, and the blind luck that sometimes changes history. So when Wargaming contacted us again, saying that they wanted to sponsor a series of episodes on the Bismarck, uh, we jumped on that right away. But what makes the Bismarck story interesting isn't just the ships and the battles, it's the hunt. For the Royal Navy, the biggest problem wasn't sinking the Bismarck, it was finding it. This is a detective story writ large, an international manhunt that stretched from the icy seas of the Denmark Strait to the chattering computers of Bletchley Park. It will begin nice. with an interrupted dinner and end with the destruction of the largest battleship on Earth. Mm. Allow me to set the scene. 21st of May, early morning, a British naval base at Scapa Flow. Vice Admiral John Toby, commander of the home fleet, is aboard his flagship thinking that this might finally be it. For days, German reconnaissance planes have passed above him, recording the position of his ships. Scapa Flow is a hard station, a barren rock in freezing seas, but it's also strategically crucial real estate. Okay. From their base in Scapa, Tovi's fleet guards the watery expanse that stretches between Greenland and Nazi-occupied mm -hmm. Norway, and securing that line was the only thing keeping Britain alive. This is a crucial juncture in the war. The previous year, France had collapsed, German forces had occupied Norway and Denmark, and the Italians had entered the war on the side of its fascist ally, Germany. The no, Axis did. powers were now masters of Europe, and Britain stood alone, besieged in its own islands. As Luftwaffe raids pounded its cities, American supply convoys were the only thing keeping Britain in the fight. This was a tonnage war, measured in <laughs> cargo delivered rather than ships sunk. Convoys raced through U-boat infested waters to get Fortress Britain enough food, bullets, and oil to defend democracy. Tophy's nightmare was of a single ship, the Bismarck. British intelligence had been building a file on her for some time, even attending her launch in 1939 and monitoring huh. her sea travels via air and signals intercepts. They still didn't know well, everything. They Jack. didn't know how fast she was, her crew complement, or what new technologies she okay. had, but they did know that she was enormous and advanced, outfitted with both heavy armor and 15-inch guns that mm. could sink near anything the Royal <laughs> Navy could throw at it. But the British Scary. also knew that Bismarck was more than a ship. She was a political statement. Hitler had jump-started Germany's economy with public spending, including a focus on military rearmament. Yep. The Bismarck was a visible symbol of Germany's economic miracle, a nation with a 100% employment rate, provided you didn't count the Jews and the women forced out of the workplace. Oh, okay. And at over 40,000 tons, Bismarck was also a flagrant violation of post-World War I treaties that limited the size of Germany's naval vessels. This ship celebrated the Nazi success and proclaimed their warlike intentions. This was a new Germany, an economically strong Germany that had military ambition and rejected any attempt to restrain it. Mm. But so far, this great ship was still bottled up in the Baltic, operating out of ports in northern Germany and occupied Poland. But if the Bismarck could stage a breakout, slip between Denmark and Norway, and cut north into the Atlantic, it could plunge down into the Atlantic convoys, a knife straight into Britain's supply artery. Previous yeah. German raids had proved costly, and those ships had only been a quarter the size of the Bismarck. Mm -hmm. Toby's phone rings, a direct line from the Admiralty in London. 
the call passes on the Swedish Navy's sighting, but now it's corroborated with more information. A Polish source reported that the Bismarck left port three days ago, and a Norwegian resistance cell spotted a group of German ships passing between Norway and Denmark. Royal it's Air Force reconnaissance planes, everywhere. they say, are currently scouring the fjords. Tovi issues an order to his fleet, refuel, and stand by to sail. Hmm. 1315 hours in Norway. An RAF pilot cruising the like fjords spots and photographs well. a large ship with a heavy cruiser nearby. Back in Scotland, an analyst confirms the silhouette while the photos are still damp from the darkroom. It's the Bismarck, probably with the heavy cruiser Prinz Eugen. The photos confirm Tovi's greatest fear. Worse, the weather is deteriorating, with fog forecast overnight. Bismarck had probably been hiding in the fjords, yeah. waiting for just such weather to cover its dash to the Atlantic. Tovi summons his subordinate, Vice Admiral Lancelot Holland, and details his plan. Holland will take his squadron to southern Iceland and hold there, yep. staying in a position to intercept the Bismarck regardless of whether she sails down the east or the west coast of the okay. island. Tovi no. will stay in Scapa in case the Bismarck tries to use the foul weather to sneak past the north side of Britain. Mm -hmm. The cruisers currently patrolling the Denmark Strait would stay on course with orders to spot and shadow the Bismarck, then radio its course so Holland can intercept. Holland's squadron slips out at midnight. 22nd of May, at 0200 hours in okay. Norway. An RAF bombing raid hits the Bismarck's last known position, releasing their payloads blind due to the low clouds. Mm -hmm. Heavy fog, no sighting. Further reconnaissance flights are futile for the next several hours. 20 hundred hours in the Scapa flow. Admiral Tovey, who has been living next to the phone for the last 24 hours, would, receives a report from the Admiralty. A daring reconnaissance plane has flown low enough to break through the clouds. The Bismarck is gone. Mm. Any further reconnaissance flights are grounded due to poor weather. He orders the command to sail for Iceland immediately, hoping to fill any gaps in their screen. In the 30 hours since the last sighting of the Bismarck, the German raiders could have sailed 600 miles toward the Atlantic access points around Iceland. As Tovi leaves port, he radios Holland to say that Bismarck is heading his way, and that the fleet must maintain radio silence. The Bismarck has Don't slipped through the first net. It must not slip through another. 23rd of May, 1922 hours, the Denmark Strait. Two sister cruisers have been searching the icy, mine-filled waters of the Denmark Strait for 50 hours, ever since the Bismarck was last we spotted spoke about when a look- lines. That yeah. shit is fucking scary. Mine. Mate, I would not- Ah, uh, imagine just like going um, along and just an explosion happening, you're about- Well, we're sinking. I'm sure there are still sea mines out <laughs> there. Are, the there are, there are. They're, they're still active sea mines. They've got to be. They've... I see you. You haven't liked the video yet. Why not? Go on. Go like it. While you're at it, you know you want to subscribe. And if you want to go to our social medias, all the links you need are in the description box down below. And you might as well head over to our Patreon as well, where you can get extra bonus content if you're enjoying this. That link's in the description box down below. But we'll get straight back into the video. Love you guys. Got to be. Lookout sees two ships emerge from a snowstorm. He thinks they're British at first, but a second Just glance nuts. sends him scrambling. It's a German oh, battleship, it's and only seven... It's not, because... Jack, I, I'm expecting to have to write on your tombstone, he died because he was stupid. No. 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 At the bottom of my tombstone will be, we'll meet again. <laughs> he made a mistake. <laughs> Life is a mistake. Uh, Miles away, well within the killing range of its 15 inch guns. Yeah. Action mm -hmm. stations sound. The officers below abandon their pre dinner sheriff. <laughs> Running feet pound the deck. The cruiser turns hard over and makes for the fog. Its 8 inch guns useless against the steel behemoth. For three agonizing minutes, the crew waits for incoming shells as their little ship slowly takes cover in the mist. The Bismarck shells so never arrive. Reorienting herself, the cruiser stalks its quarry through the fog and the rain, deploying its most effective weapon, a sensor array. These cruisers may not have heavy guns, but they're outfitted with advanced systems that allow yes. them to track enemy ships solely by radar, a feat never achieved before. Mm. The cruiser radios its sighting reports to her sister ship 15 miles south, who relays it to the rest of the fleet and rushes to join the pursuit. An hour passes. 2030 right. hours, the Denmark Strait. Over eager and heading at speed, the second cruiser plunges through a fog bank to find itself oh. nearly head on with the Bismarck, six miles away and closing at 30 knots. 
Her captain orders the helm hard to starboard and deploys a smokescreen, breaking for the mist. Mm. This time, the Bismarck is quick on the draw. A yep. salvo of 15-inch shells lands behind the vessel's stern, rattling it with metal splinters. Another shell lands 50 yards short and skips like a stone over the bridge. But the cruiser escapes, shrouded in mist. Lucky! The twin cruisers... Al- the fuck are you going to say if you're on deck and you see that thing go overboard? Right? And you just see it skip three times. Bobby got free! <laughs> he got free skips! Floor it, sunshine! Yeah. <laughs> A little wiser and a bit more careful, uh, fall in behind the Bismarck and the Prince Eugen, staying out of sight but within the 10-mile range of their mm-hmm. radar arrays, quietly broadcasting Bismarck's position to the fleet. 2100 hours, the interception fleet at Denmark Strait. Okay. Admiral Holland's battlecruiser force plunges towards the Bismarck. There are rough seas and Ooh. snow flurries in the strait, with Ooh. waves so high that their destroyer escorts are getting submerged and have to pull back. Destroyers will do little good anyway. Insane, Holland brother. knows. This will be a two-on-two battle of capital ships. At his disposal, he has the newest ship in the British fleet, the Prince of Wales, okay. and his flagship, the pride of the Royal Navy. The, a- the Prince of Wales, I'm sure, was at Portsmouth Harbour. Was it? I am sure that was at Prin- uh, Portsmouth Harbour. What, just one of those ones that... One of them had the Prince of Wales on her uh, on the side of her ship. We'll have a little look in the I'll footage I'll have to look, got. but I'm sure it said the Prince of Wales. Whether or not it's the same one. Yeah. If they have the same, like, different yeah, ones, yeah, yeah. but I'm sure it said the Prince of Wales. Okay. HMS Hood. The Hood it has been be called the one, most beautiful know. ship afloat. Between the wars, she had circumnavigated the globe as a mm. symbol of British invincibility. Mm. She's the star of fleet reviews and propaganda reels. Many of her crew got their first taste of Navy life by seeing her at holiday parades or through childhood tours of her I deck. See. She is the beloved, the unsinkable, the mighty hood. Mm. And she is steaming towards destruction. Join us next time for a clash of flagships, a wounded giant, and a three-word order that will oh. echo throughout naval history. And we are looking forward to finding out what that is. If you haven't already, yeah. head over to Extra History's chat page, links in the description box down below, where you can watch this video and plus many, many more. And while you're at it, if you haven't already, subscribe to their channel and hit that notification bell to see all recent videos that will be dropping. Mm-hmm. If you enjoyed our reaction, and you like the look of it, then go over to our Patreon where you can get more extended content, bonus clips, everything you can think of. That link's in the description box down below. If you enjoyed this video, you know what you need to do. You need to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we're gonna jump straight into the next one. Let's go.